All right, the final book of life. What is that? By now, I think I've repeated it enough times. What do you think that is? The final. Is there a final or a non-final or a beginning? What is it? Explain to me. Number one answer. The evolving book of life evolves till the end of time as names are blotted out. All mankind are in it first before the creation. Then we have the final book of life, which is also called nominatively in a name only, the Lamb's book of life. All those who are going to be saved, they're in that book from the beginning. Don't get written in later on. And if anybody lives out their temporal life without having believed in a second, in a moment's time or more, they are erased after that temporal life is over. That's the Lamb's book of life, what's left, the names that are left that are elect. The final book of life was written from the foundation of the world. That's number one. We have some verses to go along with it. Revelation 13, 8. And all who dwell on the earth will worship him, the Antichrist, everyone whose name has not been written from the foundation of the world in the book of the life of the Lamb who has been slain. So, from the foundation of the world. The final book of life is a final book which has no erasures, whose content is different from the evolving book of life until the end of time. So it's like you have different sets of books, really. <clears throat> But God's describing this on the basis of man's cap capacity to understand. The final book of life was written before the foundation of the world and never included any individuals who would never be saved. Final book. But it's written in the beginning. It's before the foundation of the world because God knows it all. Because he's decreed it all. Revelation 13, 8, And all who dwell on the earth will worship him, the Antichrist, everyone whose name has not been written from the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb, who has been slain. Note that the context here points to a book which lists only those who will ever be saved. The historical setting is the middle of the tribulation period, which is before the end of time, before the end of time. In verse 13.8 in Revelation says, All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, i.e. be unsaved, everyone whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb. 21.27 of Revelation Nothing impure will ever enter it, the gates of the New Jerusalem, only those whose names have been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So if you're written in there before the creation of the world, that's the evolving Book of Life. By the time the New Jerusalem comes around, your name will be erased because you hadn't believed in your lifetime. Have been written. Perfect tense indicating completed action in the past with ongoing results of permanent entry never to be erased. Now that's the final book of life. Permanent entrance. Never to be erased. Since all of those who will enter into through the gates of New Jerusalem are written in the Lamb's book of life from the creation of the world, then one might infer that no one who has written in the Lamb's book of life from the creation of the world will be blotted out so that they do not enter the gates. Thus the Lamb's book of life must be different from the evolving book of life because in the latter, names can be blotted out Thus, the Lamb's Book of Life must be the final book of life. Notice the logic here. Language, context, and logic. Notice that all the unsaved in 13.8 of Revelation are part of a group of individuals that will worship the beast and are not in the final book of life, the Lamb's Book of Life. Thus, all those who will be saved are all those who are in the final book of life and no one else. Thus, no one in the final book of life will worship the beast, i.e. be unsaved. And thus, no one will be blotted out of the final book of life. Evidently, this book of life is a final book. Since names were written in this final book of life, only from the foundation of the world, and since only those who will be saved are in it, then its context must be static. Since the evolving book of life can be permanently unsaved, names written in it, as previously shown, That's Psalm 69, 19 to 28. The evolving book of life can have permanently unsaved names written in it, as previously shown, that it cannot be the book of life in view in 13.8 in of Revelation, because Revelation 13.8 says that no one written in the book of the Lamb, the Lamb's book of life, will worship the beast, i.e. have their destiny to be the lake of fire. Apparently there's a this thing there that if, if, you're a, if you're a person who worships the Lamb, uh, you are, are going to be unsaved, and those who are not, don't worship the Lamb. They're those who are going to be saved. 
Therefore, at this time in history, the evolving Book of Life has a different content from the final Book of Life, which only lists whoever will be saved and no one else. <clears throat> there still remains the rest of this period and one, the 1,000-year 1, millennial rule in which millions will be born and choose to come to faith in Christ or not. Thus, the Lamb's Book of Life must be the final version which includes the rest of time in the future until the great white throne judgment seat, because there cannot be any blotting out of the Lamb's Book of Life at the time of in Revelation 13.8 in the midst of the tribulation period with more than a thousand years to go in history with millions to be saved and millions to be blotted out. I know this gets a little complicated, maybe a little bit of a review here. That's why I have the charts and this detailed exposition of definitions. I'm trying to be careful with the wording. Revelation 21, 27 continued. It says, Nothing impure will enter it, the heavenly city of the New Jerusalem, nor will anyone who does not does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You say, <clears throat> the evolving Book of Life, due to its changing nature over history of blotting individuals out, would not be able to fix on only those who will be saved at this moment in history. For some in the evolving book of life at that moment will be unsaved and will be blotted out because they don't get saved in their lifetime, their physical lifetimes. I write physical. Physical. Well, I'll leave it in caps. Physical lifetime as opposed to eternal. <clears throat> Since Revelation 13.8 indicates at this point in history that those who are not listed in the book are unsaved, and since the evolving book of life can at this time in history, have unsaved written in it, which have not yet been blotted out, because they haven't died yet. And then the final book of life is in view in 13.8, and not the evolving book of life. Fair Hebrews 12.23 To the church of the firstborn, whose names are, are have been written in heaven. Okay. They got the R there. Have been written. Perfect tense, signifying a completed action in the past with ongoing results. In other words, a permanent writing in, never to be erased. So if you're looking at the Lamb's Book of Life, you're permanently written in it, can't be erased. God is sovereign. All right. <laughs> Point C. Those who will be saved are written in the final Book of Life, but are unsaved at conception. What about you and me? Think about it. I didn't get saved till I was 17 years old. But when I was born, I was unsaved. When I was in the womb, I was unsaved. If I died in the womb, God's got to guarantee me salvation because I don't reach age of accountability and where I can refuse to believe. Now people keep bringing that up. Individuals, when they are conceived, are not yet believed in Jesus Christ, have, have not yet believed, and yet until they do, they are unsaved and remain under condemnation. <clears throat> For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Right? Eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Okay, that's the motive. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. Okay, but where were you before you believed? But whoever does not believe yet stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the God's one and only Son. You're under God's condemnation. If you died before you believed, guess what? You go to hell. Somehow, by miraculous, whatever it is, events, I chose to believe. I didn't want to believe in Christ and my commitment to live for him because I knew I couldn't perform that and do that and I couldn't live up to it, so I didn't. If I got died by the time, by the time I went down from the stands all the way down to the, under the uh, stadium, the Madison Square Garden, where the subway goes, uh, and stood there and finally believed, between those minutes, if I died, I'd, I'd go to the lake of fire. But I chose to believe. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. And until you do, then you no longer, when you do, you're no longer under condemnation forever. You have eternal life at that moment, that present moment, and it can never be lost because if it's lost, it's not the eternal life, is it? So individuals who we saved and are, are unsaved when they are, when they are conceived. Psalm 58.3, even from birth the wicked go astray from the womb, they are wayward and speak lies. Surely I was sinful at birth, Psalm 
sinful from the time my mother conceived me. David spoke these words and wrote them down. Since all individuals, even those who will be saved at some time in their mortal lives, are born unsaved, and since all men are conceived in sin and thus are unsaved at conception, we've got these verses here, and since all who are saved are written in the book of life from the creation of the world, then during the time those who are going to be saved have not become saved, then the book of life has unsaved written in them. It's including you and I. Right? At the end of time, guess what the book of life, the evolving book of life looks like? Identical to the last book of life. But the last book of life is the final book of life. The evolving book of life evolves until it becomes the last book of life. You get it? Those who do worship the beast will not be saved. In Revelation 20, 12 to 15, And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead and that were in it, the death in Hades. And death in Hades gave up the dead that were in them. And each person was judged according to what he had done. Notice that. You don't get judged to whether or not you believe, because you didn't believe, then if you did, you'd get the righteousness of Christ, and you wouldn't get judged at all, except for eternal rewards and a different judgment. But the dead in Hades were thrown into the lake of fire because they were judged according to what he had done, and they didn't match up with Christ's perfect righteousness. If they don't, you have sin in your life, you become the person that you uh, created sins. Those sins are paid for, yes. But they're not forgiven. You're personally going to remain the way you are because you didn't give God permission to change you into a perfect being. The lake of fire is the second death. If any man's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. How do you stay in the book of life? The evolving book of life? Believe. And you stay in it. And then you are the last book of life. You're going to be definitely in there because that's the final book of life. You get this so far. It's complicated. I know. So, Revelation 13, 8, all the inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast. All whose names have not been written in the, the book of life, belonging to the Lamb that was slain from the foundation, from the creation of the world. Since no one enters heaven if they are not written in the book of life, and since anyone who worships the beast is not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, then anyone who worships the beast will not enter heaven. Okay, point six. The book of life at the end of time is identical to the final book of life which was written in the, before the foundation of the world. All right, I already, already covered this, but let's review it. It's complicated. It's important to get this because people have it absolutely the opposite to what we're taught reading from Scripture here. Since individuals are blotted out of the, the book of life, Psalm 69, then it is not a final book of life because it evolves over time. And since only those who are found in the book of life at the end of time are heaven bound, and since at the end of time, only those who are saved are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Then the Book of Life will evolve into the Lamb's Book of Life, having only those who are saved by the end of time, and both are thus virtually identical. The former evolving over time, the latter being created complete before the foundation of the world. I would imagine in heaven, the angelic world has a chance, and those who are saved have a chance to, to view God's superlative control and sovereign decrees and blessings over the world as he's created it to evolve in something that points to his righteousness and only that can prevail his sovereignty. Thank God only God's sovereignty can prevail because men have weird ideas and very sinful things. I don't want man's input into it at all because sooner or later somewhere is going to come around and back to bite you if mankind has some control over what happens. Exodus 32, Then Moses returned to the Lord and said, Alas, this people has committed a great sin, and they made a god of gold for themselves. But now if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, please blot me, Moses, out of out from thy book which thou hast written. What is that? Which book is that? And the Lord said to Moses, Whoever sinned against me, I will blot him out of my book. Bible Knowledge Commentary says on this, we'll get more on this next time. 